nature explorers. Let's learn about one of the most amazing places in the world, tide pools. There are incredible creatures that live in the tide pools. Some of them sound like they were just made up by someone with an incredible imagination, but they're really, really true and they exist and they live here close to me. I live in Sonoma County, California, about an hour north of San Francisco, and I just have to drive a little bit to find some tide pools. You can find tide pools in lots of different places in the world, and the ones here in Northern California are something special. Are you ready to check them out with me? I'm out in the field, out in the field, looking for tide pools out in the field. Yeah. Sea stars are incredible. One thing I think is amazing about sea stars is that they can regenerate. What? Can you try to say that word at home? Regenerate, a four syllable word, must be fancy. That means that if they lose a limb or an arm or a ray, imagine if I just went and I lost the whole arm, well, I wouldn't be able to grow that back again. But if I was a sea star, I could. I could grow that back again. Grow, 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 grow. Even if they lost two rays, as long as it doesn't completely sever their central disc, they can regenerate. Amazing. Also, they are called echinoderms. They're a special type of invertebrate. They have no backbone at all. There's a ton of animals that are similar and that they have no backbone. Those are invertebrates. Lastly, and I think this is the most amazing thing. Get closer. When they want to eat something, do you know what they do? They don't take it and put it inside of their body and digest it in their stomach with all those amazing juices. No, no, no. They take their stomach and they put it out of their body. And then they digest their food outside of their body. And then bring their stomach back in. Right? All right, let's jump in and learn a little bit more. Here I am back in the classroom, getting ready to do one of my very favorite things. Read a book. I love learning new information. We're gonna check out one of my very favorite books all about tide pools, this eyewitness book called Seashore. And I also found a book on Epic I'm gonna to read to you. Let's go check them out. Stars of the sea. Oh my goodness, look at all these amazing sea stars. They are so different. Let's just check out the illustrations. The star, actually, if you think this might be photographs. It's called a blood star. Um, this one over here is called a spiny sun star and a goose foot sea star. I guess this is because it looks like it's webbed feet like a goose, right? This one says hungry starlets, small cushion stars or starlets. Hmm, little teeny ones, right? This is called um, a spiny sea star. And look at this brittle star, it's sort of a relative of the sea star. A lot of times people call them starfish, but I like to call them sea stars because they're not really fish at all. Check this out. I'm not going to read every single thing on this page, but I do want to show you this as I was talking about regeneration. Here it is, newly armed. Sea stars can grow new arms. If an arm is crushed by a boulder or torn by a predator, it can be cast off and a new one grows. In fact, as long as most of the central disc is intact, one remaining arm can grow four new ones. Holy manoli. There's a ton of information in here. I'm not going to read every part, but I am going to read right here. So again, the heading here is stars at the sea. And here's what it says. On almost any seashore somewhere, there will be sea stars and probably a few of their relatives, such as brittle stars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. These creatures belong to a group called the echinoderms, meaning spiny skinned, and they have been around for perhaps 500 million years. Sea stars that are not spiny are protected by an exoskeleton or outer skeleton of hard chalky plates embedded just under the tough skin. 
Although there are more than 6,000 species of echinoderms, 2,000 more species than there are within the mammal group, these creatures are sea dwellers, so they are unfamiliar to most people. They also seem strange because their body plan consists of arms arranged like rays coming from a central point. There is no front end. When a sea star goes for a walk to follow the retreating tide or find a cool spot out of the sun, any arm can take the lead. There's a couple more labels I wanna show you real quick. Right over here, you can see the light sensitive tips of arms often turn up to see the way. These aren't eyes like we have, but they can detect light. And they're on the end of every one of those rays. And the other little caption is right here. It says, covered in spines. Stiff and muscular, the spiny sea star is one of the larger seashore species. Each calcareous or chalky spine is surrounded by tiny pincher-like organs or, oh my goodness, pedicellariae. <laughs> it uses these to rid itself of parasites, small hitchhikers, and other debris. This sea star feeds on bivalve mollusks. All right, well, let's go check out another book right now from Epic Online. Life Under the Sea, Sea Stars, Sea stars under the sea. A sea star is hungry. It is looking for food. Sea stars cannot see. How do they find food? Sea stars have tiny cells on their rays. The cells sense smells. Sea stars have hundreds of tube feet. They help sea stars move. Sea stars have eye spots. Eye spots sense light and dark. Watch out, clams. Watch out, scallops. Watch out, oysters. A sea star is near. It might eat you. The sea star hunches over a clam. Its tube feet stick to the shells. The sea star pulls and pulls. The clam opens. Now the sea star feasts. And here we have parts of a sea star. We've got the eye spot, a small spot on the end of each ray that senses light and dark. Down here, there are the tube feet, and here's a close-up version. Soft, sticky feet on the bottom of a sea star that help it move and raise a sea star's arms. There they are. Now that we have some background information, let's work on our field guide. We're gonna label the diagram and then create our own drawing. Making a scientific illustration, I'll get guide you through it a little bit. If you don't have a copy of this field guide yet, no problem. Just look down there in that description. There's a link so that you can download and print it at home. Come on, let's go. All right, Tide Pool Explorer, open up your field guide to the first page. The first thing you'll do is copy the name of the organism right here on this line. One fancy word for a picture is called a diagram, and that's what these are. These are pictures that I found. Here's the top view of a sea star, which looks very different from the bottom view of a sea star. And let's go ahead, and if you want, you can rewrite these labels, or you can just draw lines like I'm going to demonstrate. So that is step one. So let's see, the first word is rays. So we're gonna put a line to the top view here. Here's a ray, there's one. And since it's plural rays, let's do it to a, two of them. And this is a pretty fancy word. It says madriaporite, Madri uh, madriaporite. Wow, that's a big word. Um, that What that means is there's a part on the top of the sea star that lets in water. It's like a hole that lets in water. And it's somewhere over here. It's So you just kind of put it to somewhere in the middle. It's just fine. The disc is 
basically like the sea stars version of a brain. They don't have a brain, but their nervous system that helps to control all of its bodily functions is right here. You can see if you look really carefully, one, two, three, four, five little dots that connect to all the five rays. So that disc is this middle part right here. And as long as that central disc is mostly intact, even if it loses more than one ray, it can regenerate them because it has its nervous system. And then the eye spots, again, they're not really eyes. They're these light spots, light sensitive spots at the end. So just for the very end of the rays, anything is the very end of any of the rays is the eye spot. Okay, let's look at the bottom view. So we also have the rays, so you can just point to two here. Obviously you could do all of them, but then you would have lines everywhere. The mouth is right here in the center, right in the middle. And then this mouth opens up. It actually has like, it's all connected right here. And, and that's where the stomach comes out of when it wants to digest its food. Instead of putting food into the little mouth here, it shoots its stomach out. It's still connected to its body. It, it digests the food and then it puts the stomach back in through the mouth. Amazing, cool, and a little creepy. And then for the tube feet, they're all along, there's so many all along inside here. All, all of these, it has a bunch of tube feet like we saw in the book. Now you get to do your scientific illustration right here. This is your drawing. Instead of a cartoon, which is really fun to draw sometimes, we're gonna use our, our best scientist skills to draw it. You can kind of copy it from these and feel free to add some labels as well. You can choose if you wanna do just the top view, just the bottom view, or both. I'm the teacher, so I better do both. <laughs> so go ahead and start with the top view here and get yourself five arms or rays. Two, three, four, five. Remember, there's lots of different types of sea stars. Just do your best on that. There you go, there's your five. And then you're gonna go ahead and put your little hole for the madrepore, for the, the water to be coming in and out of your sea star. Um, you can put some of your little spines, little spikes on here if you want. Draw those in. You can feel free to cover the whole thing. Um, the anus, or where all of the waste comes out, is also a little hole on the very top. It's smaller, a little smaller than the madreporite. I'm gonna go ahead and add my labels in so I know what I made. So here's my madreporite. I love this new word. I love learning new words. That's where the water comes in and kind of goes through the body of the sea star. And here's the anus, which is where all the waste products come out. If you want to know more about that, ask a grown-up. They'll tell you. And then you have tube feet. You can't really see most of the tube feet from the top view, but you can. There, a few of them might be kind of showing like that. And I'll shoot some over here. Do 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 do. And I'm going to write tube feet once here, and I will actually use this label for both of my illustrations. So there it is right there. And now I'm going to do my bottom view. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and do five arms of the sea star, or five rays. One, two, three, four, and five. It doesn't have to match perfectly to the other one. And then I'm gonna draw the mouth right here in the center. Maybe I should say what I'm doing here. So this is the top view. And this is the bottom view. And I'm going rather quickly. So don't worry about pausing the video and following along or even rewinding it. <laughs> now we're gonna label this mouth here. Look at all these great labels, mouth, and then let's put some, some tube feet along here. Before we do that, I'm gonna note that each of these rays is split up like this. It has a little line. It comes along if you look really carefully at a sea star or the picture of a sea star. And then your tube feet, a couple of them might be coming up like this, but then a lot of them are gonna be here. Tons and tons of circles all along to represent the tube feet so many and that's how it just glides along and sticks to things in the ocean 
Okay. Great, and our last thing is we have the rays. So let's have our tube feet labeled on both the top and the bottom. And then the rays, let's put one label here. Ray R A, oops, that A isn't perfect. Let's try that again. Make sure we can read it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to have to be readable. R A Y S, and there we go. Rays here and rays there. Ooh, look at that, a labeled scientific illustration. Feel free to add more spines, little spikes or spines or two feet to make it look even more realistic. Lastly, you are going to write down here something that you notice or wonder or what this reminds you of. You can do more than one thing if you want. You can write more on the back of your page. Have a conversation with someone. Pause and discuss, hmm, what do you notice about a sea star? What do you wonder about a sea star? What does this animal or shape or some part remind you of? Have a conversation and then write down one of your observations or wonderings. I hope you enjoyed learning about sea stars with me. I cannot wait to keep learning about tide pools with you. Next episode is all about plants in the tide pool. Seaweed time. See you then. Thank you.